Before we move on to lateral resolution, let's do another question on axial resolution. Decreasing the pulse duration will lead to what? Is it A, longer spatial pulse length, or SPL? Is it B, decreased axial resolution? Is it C, shorter SPL? Or is it D, no change in SPL? You may pause the video to think about your answer. The correct response is C, shorter SPL. Shorter pulse duration, in the temporal aspect, is synonymous with short SPL, the spatial resolution. Shorter PD leads to increased axial resolution, which is desirable for ultrasound resolution. Lateral spatial resolution. What is the definition? It is the minimal resolvable distance between reflectors in the direction perpendicular to beam travel. In some sense, it equals the beam width. This illustration shows the beam width as defined within the confines of the ultrasound beam. There are three particles, one, two, and three. Depending on the beam width in relation to the reflectors in question, you can decide whether it is resolvable or not. In the case of items one and two, they are resolvable because they are one is in the path of the beam, whereas the other is outside the path of the beam. On the other hand, particles 2 and 3 cannot be resolved and they blend together because they're both within the beam path. Beam width is a function of wavelength or frequency, first and foremost. It's also a function of the piezoelectric transducer diameter, which we'll go into more detail later on in this lecture. Third function is the distance from the transducer, which again we'll describe in more detail during the beam forming uh, section of this lecture. In summary, in terms of axial spatial resolution, it depends on the frequency or wavelength and the pulse duration or bandwidth, whereas lateral resolution equals the beam width, which is a function of frequency, wavelength, and transducer design. Let's do another question. If the number of pulses increases while the frequency of the ultrasound transducer remains the same, the axial resolution does what? Is it A, it remains unchanged? Or is it B, it worsens? Or is it C, it improves? You may pause the video. The correct response is B, it worsens the axial resolution. Remember, for the same operating frequency, a larger number of pulses will lead to worse axial resolution. Conversely, decreasing the pulse number will improve the axial resolution. We'll now discuss ultrasound beam shaping and focusing in this segment. It is entirely dependent upon the application of the Huygen principle of wavelet formation and incorporation. Consider an ultrasound point source, as denoted by the blue dot. A wavefront will be generated from this point source as it traverses towards the body tissue. The white line denotes the wavefront, which serves as the termination point of the various vectors emanating from the ultrasound point source. It expands with time as it traverses spatially towards the body tissue. Ultimately, these Huygen wavelets can be added together to form the resulting wavefront of the transducer output. By adding the intensities of the wavelets, you can sum them all up to describe the final wavefront formation. However, phase differences can either constructively or destructively interfere with one another, and therefore the ability to harness these uh, differences to constructively add up the wavelets will be key in terms of the formation of the ultrasound beam of a transducer array. Consider a Huygen wavelet sound source with the spatially expanding wavelets as it traverses towards the body tissue. As the wavefronts get bigger and bigger, it diffuses. However, if you add up the point sources from multiple locations, you will have a more focused beam formation, as evident by the summation of the Huygen wavelets. As they get larger and larger, you can sum them up at any particular point. In this case, adding the in-phase intensities of the three point source and their subsequent wavelets, you can have this resulting two-humped beam formation that you see on the bottom. The direction of the wavefront, in this case, is pointing from top to bottom. 
as you add up the Huygen wavelets emanating from the various point sources of the transducer surface, you derive the beam profile. In the near field, near zone, or otherwise known as the Fresno zone, the nose part of the beam between the transducer surface and the waist of the beam. From the waist of the beam onwards is the Fraunhofer or far field zone, which denotes the field region of divergence. At the waist of the beam, the beam width is minimum, which is located at the focal length, which is the distance measured from the transducer surface to the waist of the beam. The waist of the beam is where the beam was a minimum. From that point on, the beam diverges because of the loss of focus. For a single piezoelectric element transducer, a focal zone is defined whereby the width of the beam during this, uh, uh, in this length of the beam is less than or equal to two times the minimum beam width. This also can be used to describe a system with a transducer array or one with fixed lens. How is beam boundary defined? As in a laser, there is a boundary that is, can be defined uh, as in the case of an ultrasound beam. Namely, we use the 10 dB times log of the intensity equation that we learned in the first lecture. When the intensity is minus 14 dB, the boundary the intensity is 4%, and that's where we define the boundary. To clarify, Minus 14 dB cutoff implies that for a beam peak intensity of 0 dB, the boundary where we define a cutoff is where it is minus 14 dB or 4%. Just as we can describe an ultrasound pulse in the frequency domain in terms of bandwidth or resonance, resonant frequency, or in time as a pulse duration, we can also describe ultrasound pulse in terms spatially, as in a teardrop. A fat teardrop is an apt description of the spatial uh, ultrasound pulse in terms of the two dimensions. You have the horizontal dimension, which is the pulse diameter, and you have the vertical dimension of the teardrop, which is the SPL, or spatial pulse length, that we described in the previous segment. In general, the pulse diameter is much greater than the SPL. As you know, SPL is proportional to the pulse duration. Therefore, pulse diameter is much greater than pulse duration. In terms of beam travel, if you imagine a series of ultrasound pulses in the form of teardrops, as it leaves the transducer surface and travels through the Fresnel zone, it gets smaller and smaller in terms of the pulse diameter as it approaches the focal length. At the focal length, the diameter is the smallest, but as it leaves the focal uh, zone and heads towards further and further into the Fraunhofer zone, the beam starts to diverge and therefore the teardrop becomes bigger as it reaches towards the body tissue surface. Beam width versus frequency. In simulation, you see that at 5 MHz, you have a certain beam profile. At 10 MHz, the simulation shows that the beam profile gets got narrower, which is synonymous to a smaller beam width. At 20 MHz, the situation improves even further. Therefore, Higher frequency gives you smaller beam width and improved lateral resolution. In summary, the beam profile contains the Fresnel zone, which is the near field. There's the Fraunhofer zone, which is the far field. We know that the signal intensity is non-uniform across the beam. And beam is narrowest at the focal length, which is the boundary between the Fresnel and Fraunhofer zones. To maintain the same beam width across the profile, as the focal length increases, the aperture must be increased. If you're a photographer, you know that F number is a comparable concept here. As the focal length increases, you must increase the lens aperture to compensate to keep the F number constant. Finally, for single element transducers that we've been describing in this lecture, it does not allow for operator focus. Let's do a question to test your knowledge. If an ultrasound beam diverges more in the Fraunhofer zone, is it A, divergence angle is smaller? Is it B, axial resolution is improved? Is it C, lateral resolution is improved? Or is it D, lateral resolution is worsened? The correct response is D, lateral resolution is worsened. Remember, the divergence occurring in the front hover zone implies an increased divergence angle. And the key point here is that the resulting beam width becomes larger, leading to worse lateral resolution.